right, good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. It's still April and it's still cold. We have water temps at 37 degrees out here right now. So we are kind of what I would consider the open waters of Lake Superior. Um, had a little bit of a boat right here, but we are out here. The sun is just starting to rise. It's just starting to get daylight and we are on some lake trout structure. Now, I don't really know. I don't have a plan in place today. You can't come into a day like this with a set plan because the fish are gonna throw you curveballs all throughout the day. Again, it's still April. Fishing can still be tough, but um, you know, you, you guys saw in an episode a couple weeks ago, we were trolling kind of near shore structure, up shallow. This is kind of isolated structure. So more of a, a reef structure with, with no shoreline around us. So that's what we're gonna be targeting today. We're gonna drive around, try to graph a couple fish and uh, try to target them into that 50 to 90 foot range. If we need to go deeper, we're gonna go deeper. If we need to go shallower, we're gonna go shallower. So lake trout around your near shore are gonna act a lot different than lake trout on your isolated structure like we're here today. So I don't really know where they're gonna be. No one knows. We're out here, it's all the excitement. That's what I love about it. Anything can happen. It's the unknown, stick with us. It's gonna be a good one. Ideally, Buster's driving the boat looking for some fish. I'm gonna rig up rods. Ideally, we keep the trolling rods in the boat today. Yes, we have trolling rods, we have downriggers. Um, that's kind of a backup plan, but plan A is I like to catch these fish jigging or casting or, or whatever. Um, so we kind of have rods for every scenario. So what I have here is like a legend tournament. This is a seven, seven to one medium heavy, um, you know, targeting that maybe 20 to 50 foot depth range if the fish are there. We have more of like a heavy, this is like a, my, one of my pike rods. This would be like that 50 to 100 foot depth range, you know, a good rod to target that. And then we have our musky rods that we can fish body baits on if we're targeting kind of that 70 to you know 200 foot depth range. So kind of rods for every scenario, every situation, just because we don't really know where those fish are, what depth they're going to be at, you know, what they want to eat. So yes, you know, we have our icon trolling rods on the boat, but we also have jigging rods for every scenario. So it's a learning, it's a learning game. That first fish is always your hardest fish this time of year. You know, sometimes you can go three, four, five hours without a fish, but then, you know, as the day progresses, you can put a pattern together. So um, we're going to get these rods rigged up, continue to drive around and just try to, you know, collect as much information as we can and try to locate these fish. We have, our busker has found a, a couple fish down there. We didn't really see anything great, like not tons of fish schooled up suspended, but we did just graph a couple there closer to the bottom in like 90 feet. So we're gonna uh, throw a bonnie down there. If I'm in like 70, 80, 90, 100 feet, like you're just way more efficient in using the kind of a heavier lure like a bondy bait or you know any bait in that five six seven eight ounce range you can cast it far it sinks quick you're just a lot more productive in covering water and trying to get a fish to bite so um what we're going to do is this you know fish these fish that we just grasped for five ten minutes and then just move us around with our bow mount and you know until we intersect with something if we stay in this 70 80 90 foot range for an hour and don't have a fish we're going to change up plans but for now we did graph a couple 
we dropped a couple waypoints. We're gonna go back through these and just kind of work them. And hopefully we're gonna see a fish. But again, it's a learning experience. I'm just excited to be out here with a jig rod in my hand. This is a St. Croix Premier Musky Rod. Um, we have 50 pound braid, 40 pound leader. You gotta use heavy line for these bondies. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of the approach today is that we're taking is just kind of acting like we're musky fishing because you know, just one fish can, can make or break your day. Every fish is special and you just don't know what can happen out here. So we're just kind of excited to be out here. It's a beautiful day, gorgeous sunrise. Lake Superior in a spot all to ourselves. I love it. Fish, there we go. Nice. That feels like a good one. Awesome. I just downsized to the Legend Tournament. Put down the Bondi bait. We had a couple on the graph chasing us and they just didn't want it. So I put on a, a white tube and here we are. Fish on. Oh, I love it. It's not gonna be a monster, but hey, it's a jigging fish. Jigging fish are so much fun. So much fun. The 7-1 medium heavy legend tournament. What's it gonna be? It's, it's gonna, oh, I see it way down there. Oh, is this water clear? That's a nice fish. Not a bad fish at all to start the day. Coming up, buddy. The white tube. Nice, grab our net here. Look at that. That there is how you start a day offshore on Lake Superior. Not a giant by any means, but hey, I'm super, oh, come on, hooked. I'm super happy and we're gonna take it. That's not a bad lake trout at all. That's actually a good one for the, for the fry pan. Nice four or five pounder. Awesome, beautiful colors on it. Big old fin on it. Oh, it doesn't get much better than this, huh? Beautiful day, light winds, lake trout, jigging, 75 feet of water. I said it downsized a little bit. Those initial couple fish didn't want that big profile bondy, so a smaller tube is what it took. And fish in the boat, that's a great start. All right, classic catch a fish in the first like 10 minutes and then nothing now for about an hour. We're graphing a lot of fish, a lot of chasers, but they just don't want to commit for whatever reason. We're trying lightweight lures, bigger lures, ripping wraps, like smaller paddle tails that take about an hour and a half to get down to bottom. Like we're throwing it all at these fish in that 60, 70, 80 foot, 90 foot depth range right now. So um, just to change things up, try to get the, I, I know there's better, better and bigger potential here. We're gonna slide out and try to jig it a little bit deeper, 120 to maybe 200 feet of water and see if we can uh, put a program together. If nothing happens there, luckily we have a trolling rods. As we mentioned earlier, I think we're gonna start to troll and just cover ground and try to pluck off some active fish. Again, there's fish here, there's chasers, they're just not eating, they're not committing, which is kind of unusual for lake trout because normally when you graph them and they chase you, they eat. But these fish, for whatever reason, are not. So we're gonna slide deep and uh, try, to, uh, try to get into a different group of fish, you know, a fish that's living in a different habitat, such as those ones out there that are a little bit deeper, they might be less impacted by whatever negative factors going on in here for these shallower fish. All right, so we have moved here, so we're just kind of idling off the edge of this reef. Now, when I'm in water over 120 feet, especially on reef structure, where it drops off, you're either gonna have number one shelf rock where it drops off very fast, or number two big boulders. Um, and when you have kind of each of those, especially big boulders, you're not gonna graph your fish. So in this scenario, when we were a little bit shallower, I was driving around until we graphed fish. Here, I'm not going, gonna do that just because I know that those fish are living down kind of in those big rocks as this reef kind of ends and we drop off into the abyss. So what I'm gonna do is we're in 140 right now. I'm just gonna kind of auto chart this a little bit and find the edge of that. And uh, you know, maybe when I get off into 200, I'm gonna turn around and come back up to the top, which is you know, 70, 80, and then come back off the side um, just to give myself some contours to go off of with our, with our trolling motor so we can kind of work that brake line. Again, targeting deeper fish, um, 
I'm, uh, I have zero concerns about catching fish out of 120, 140, 150 feet of water this time of year in terms of mortality rate and releasing. Um, that really comes into play when water temps are a little bit higher. But right now, again, very cold water in the, in the mid to upper 30s. So um, a lake trout out of, out of this depth would release just fine, especially if we take it easy on them with a jig rod, which, which that is definitely our plan. So we're going to idle around here, drop jigs down, and just see if there are going to be more fish going in this deeper water. If not, we're going to troll. That's there fish. That's fish, Joy. Easy, easy, easy. Buster, take my rod. Take my rod. Fish on. We got some weight here, boys. This one's heavy. We just made the move out deep. Like Grant was saying, we were struggling in shallower. We decided to move down deeper. Oh, this That's one's big going. Loosen your drag. Loosen your drag. Loosen your drag. Going, That's going. Big fish, yo. Big fish. Loosen your drag. <laughs> These big lake trout are no joke. He is just hauling. Look at this thing go, and the drag is not loose. <laughs> it's a 40 inch fish. He is just hauling. Just crushed it on the drop. Big bondy bait. <sighs> He's going straight back down to bottom. What are we in? 189 feet yeah. of water. That's a big fish, Joe. This thing is just going right back down. <sighs> this is a tank. Insane. I can't. I mean, this is a big, big fish. And so we were, as I was mentioning, we were just idling out. I said we we're going to idle out to 200 or so. And when we got to like 180, we grabbed a fish. And I'm like, if you graph a fish in 180, you're in for business. Joey dropped it down. He was the first one down there. And bam, he gets hit. So this is a really big fish. We got the musky mag here ready to go. I'm excited to see this. Big bondy bait, seven ounce bait to fall fast. If you're the first guy down there when you grab fish like that, you're in for business. I can't wait to see this fish because this could be a giant. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Big? Two of them. Two big ones at once. Yeah, they follow. What? Two big ones at once. No way. Two. Look at this. Look oh at this. Oh my gosh. Oh my lord. Oh. Two. <laughs> Do you know what you just did? You Do you that? know what you just did? That's like two 20 pounders. Dude, at one time. Come on. <laughs> Joey. You gotta be kidding me right now. Look Joey, at that. What did you just do? <laughs> what did you just do? That is insane, man. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. So this happened to us <laughs> once like three years ago. Josh did this on a Bondi. Joey, you just did it with bigger fish. Those are huge fish. <laughs> That's like 220 pounds. Buddy, you have to get like a mount of that. <laughs> Two huge lake trout at one time. Come check this out. This is what I love about Lake Superior. Anything can happen. And a lot of times something does happen that blows your mind, that gives you like a lifetime memory. Wait until you see this. Want some help with that? Am I stuck? I'm not even stuck on something. I can't even lift it. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow, Joe. Let's hold these up. That is wild. All right, there we go, Joe. Look at this. Check out the size of these fish. Oh my gosh, Joey. <laughs> Look at that. Two monsters at the same time. <laughs> Joe, I cannot believe this. At the same time. Man, if you want a good workout plan, <laughs> come oh. out to Lake Superior. You're gonna, Holy remember, you're, you're gonna remember that for the rest of your life, buddy. That is those crazy. Those are monsters. We got to get a picture of this, and then let's get these fish back because those are big. Look at the fins on that. Those are big, special old fish. Unbelievable! <laughs> I'm so happy for you. That's crazy. That was a pot of fish. There was like four or five of them on it. Busker's got no one. way. That a boy. Easy on it, easy on it, easy on it. Not small either. Oh, Joey just got a double. And after that, I pitched back and finally hit bottom. And man, I just got throttled. That was awesome. Literally hit bottom and two pumps up and wham. Just starting to get a program figured out here. And uh, that's... Whoa, 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 whoa. That's three fish hooked up within 
20 minutes of being at this spot maybe. This is a big fish, guys. Yeah, it's a big fish. Holy. Big fish. Holy. All right. I'm turning into net man. I like it though. I like it. That's fun. As long as someone's catching them, we are happy. This is insane. Yeah, unbelievable. It's uh, that's a big fish, buddy. Um, it's just fun to kind of get a program together. You know, you can always catch one fish like we did earlier, but then it can just kind of be a little bit of a fluke maybe. But when you get another one like this, it's uh, you know you're kind of onto something. So, 180 feet of water. Again, using gear like this, they're coming up slow. It takes some time. We edit out a lot of footage when they're coming up. So, again, no concerns in releasing fish or catching fish you know in this depth if this water was 55 60 degrees sure you know you might have you know oh that's big head shakes um you might you know be a little bit concerned about them releasing but the two that uh joey got went back good and then this one <laughs> this is going to be a big fish there he is right there that's a big fish buddy. that's a big one holy cow oh, 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 oh my, my gosh, gosh. Oh, 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 Dude, <laughs> what did you just catch? What did you just catch? Oh my god. Dude, that's a monster. Crap. That is the Busty. biggest lake trout I've ever caught. Yeah, that's the biggest one you've ever caught. Holy. I'm shaking. Crap. I'm shaking. That thing's huge. Grant, that thing's a toad. <laughs> oh, oh man, just after that double and that? Oh, come on. You can't make this up. Oh my god. You can't make this up. Let's that get this thing in the boat. That is a shark. Dude, that's big. All right, this is a big special fish, so I'm gonna grab it out of the net just to prevent any fin damage from it. Um, you know, these RS nets are nice because you can get them in the one or two inch mesh. The two inch mesh rips fins, one's a lot better, but this is an old special fish, so I'm just gonna grab her. I'm gonna hand her to you. We're gonna get a quick picture, maybe get a length and girth, because this is a big fish yeah, and back in. That's personal best for me, that's for sure. <laughs> Plus, look at this fish. Oh my God, dude, <laughs> that Sit is down. huge. Sit down, hold it. That is absolutely Let me get this giant. line. This is like, uh, like it's like I'm holding like my, like a cow, baby cow. Jesus. Hold on. All right, take her. Keep, is... Hold on, just keep her. Yep. Hand her on the tail end of the belly. Right keep hands on her. Look at this thing. You can't even lift that up, man. <laughs> no, holy man. That's a that's a 30 pound fish if I've ever seen one. <laughs> that is huge, buddy. That's I'm super awesome. stoked for you too. Oh, I mean, man. this is for all that action to happen in the past 10 minutes is just out of this world that is huge that let's is get a length giant. of girth on here but that's a 30 pound fish all day oh, long yeah. i'm Jesus speechless thick. Oh. look at that dinosaur go oh my god that was awesome speechless <laughs> Right there, fish, fish. How big is it? How big is it? Nice. There's literally like five or six fish on the graph right now. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a giant, but it's still a ways down there. Oh, and it's not a big one. The suspense. We have not caught a fish like under 15 pounds jigging in this deeper water yet today. That's all right though. Every fish is fun. Ooh, that's a good one, actually. <laughs> Every fish is special. Let's take a look at this guy here. Ooh, nice. That's a good fish. That's, a, that's not a bad fish at all. That's going to go well into that 10-pound range. Let's take a look at this guy. We're going to get a look at the fish. Oh, man. Is he ice cold? Is he ice cold? Come on, buddy. That is a stocky lake trout. A 10 pounder. Nice. He didn't fight much on the way up. Here, you know, you've set in your mind that every fish you catch out here in the, in the deeper water is going to be a 20 or a 35 pounder like buskers. Not the case, but hey, we'll take it. Any fish jigging is a good fish. Look at that. That's awesome. Oh, the exhilaration. Wow. 
cool couple of lamprey marks all over this fish. Those sea lampreys, man, nasty creatures. This one evaded a couple and uh, lived on to bite our bondy bait. Hopefully this is a start. We have about an hour left to fish here. Hopefully we can jig up a couple more. Man, is this fun. All right, and this was on, as I showed you guys, I'm a huge advocate of white for lake trout, especially in a bondy bait, but I changed this up earlier when we were struggling to get bit. That's a black bondy bait right there with some gold flakes in it. So by no means do you have to use white. You know, sometimes I think a dark color can actually help your success, especially when you're fishing reef structure like we are here because the primary forage for lake trout on reef structure is eel pout. So eel pout are obviously dark in color. This bondy bait mimics them. Man, that's fun. Fish, fish, fish. Just dropped down about two minutes after Grant just caught his. and looks like we got a little bite window. Feels like an all right fish. Maybe not a giant, but probably similar in the class of what Grant's fish was, maybe a 10, 12 pounder. But he's down there a ways. He's gotta come up about 160 feet. Yeah, similar fish, not bad. All right, I think our day here is coming to an end. What a blast we've had. Typical April fishing. I mean, not tons of numbers, but quality, quality fish. You have to be happy with every fish you can catch in April because by no means is it easy. And I think we got extremely lucky and fortunate today that uh, we saw the fish that we did. The two fish on one lure, Busker's massive lake trout. We had a heck of a day. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.